In the desert frontier of the Mojave, where survival is a daily struggle and power is a highly sought commodity, one faction stands out with its iron-fisted rule and unyielding control, the infamous Kaisar's Legion. With its brutal methods, authoritarian structure, and seemingly unchallenged dominance, the existence of Kaisar's Legion raises one perplexing question. Why does it work? Today let's look at the dark heart of the Legion, and attempt to understand the mechanisms behind its success. From the charismatic Kaisar himself to the fear-inducing tactics employed, let's examine the triumphs of a society built on the ruins of the old world. This is why Kaisar's Legion just works. Before becoming the legendary Kaisar, Edward Sala was but another member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, a group dedicated to bringing education and medicine to those in need. In 2246, 35 years prior to the start of New Vegas, a party including Sala, Joshua Graham, and a physician named Calhoun were sent to the Grand Canyon to study the region's tribal languages. Not long into their journey, the group found themselves kidnapped and held for ransom by the Blackfoot tribe. The Blackfoots were on the lowest rung of the tribal totem pole in the Grand Canyon. They were the weakest of the eight total tribes. But Salo saw an opportunity. Drawing from his knowledge of ancient Rome tactics and war strategy, he would teach his captors how to become competent and deadly fighters. Under the guidance of Salo, the Blackfoots were able to not only defeat the other seven tribes, but subjugate them as well. The Blackfoots would come to view Salo as their leader. The man formerly named Edward Salo would embrace the role, abandoning his birth name for the moniker of Kaisar and reorganizing the tribes into what we now know as Kaisar's Legion. From here, Kaisar and his men would embark on a conquest to transform the Legion from an amalgamation of tribes to one unified force. This takes us back to our leading question. Why does it work? Kaisar's Legion is known for its strict and commanding way of governance. In this post-apocalyptic society, decisions and rules come from the top down, with little room for disagreement. Unlike their counterpart, the NCR, or even current countries like the United States or Canada, there is no democracy. It's Kaisar's way or the highway. Or rather, Kaisar's way or the cross. Kaisar's legion is quite plainly a dictatorship. In the legion, there's a clear hierarchy, with Kaisar at the very top, of course. The legionaries, the men of Kaisar's military force, follow orders without hesitation. Disobeying these orders often leads to severe consequences, such as punishment or even death. This creates an environment where people are afraid to speak out or rebel against the established authority, leading to a generalized acceptance for things that would otherwise be considered abhorrent. Kaiser's leadership style is forceful and demanding. He believes in a strict order that eliminates any form of dissent. This kind of authoritarian rule can be seen in various aspects of Legion life, from the way decisions are made to how individuals are expected to conform to a set of beliefs and behaviors. For example, and we'll get more into this later, in the Legion there is no individual identity. Everyone in the Legion is but a tool to attain victory. Uniqueness, individualism, and alternative thinking isn't praised, but shunned. One's value is solely derived from the utility they provide to the Legion, either as a means of production or as a means of war. Kaiser's way of leading might seem tough, but it creates a sense of order and discipline in the Legion. People know what to expect, bringing a kind of stability through this structure. It's like everyone in the Legion is part of a big, powerful team, and they all play their roles to ensure the team stays strong, cogs in a well-oiled machine. Even though it might not seem fair or nice, 
Kaiser's authoritarian rule is what keeps the Legion working as a society. To be frank, it's tough in the post-apocalyptic wasteland, but through the Legion's strict and disciplined way of doing things, it helps them not only survive, but keeps their war machine well on track. The iron-fisted governance is a key factor in the Legion's ability to maintain control and cohesion in the harsh world of the wasteland. But authoritarian rule can only get you so far. Surely at some point these seeds of doubt regarding Kaiser's leadership style would start to lead to revolts or revolutions. This is where one of Kaiser's greatest weapons comes into play. Fear, the silent enforcer. Kaiser knows that to keep control, people need to be afraid of what might happen if they fail a task or don't follow the rules. It's not just about having a sole leader at the top. It's about making sure everyone beneath him is too scared to step out of line. One way Kaiser uses fear is through harsh punishments. If someone in the Legion does something out of line, disobeys, or fails an order, the consequences can be dire. Public executions, whether they be crucifixions or otherwise, are not uncommon. This sends a powerful message. Break the rules, and you might not make it out alive. But it's not only from within in which fear tactics are implemented. Kaiser often inflicts harsh attacks or makes a show of outsiders who oppose the Legion's ways. The massacre of Nipton proves this exactly. The town, while well outside of the Legion's sphere of influence, still became subject to a cruel massacre, with many dying and few becoming slaves. Speaking of, slavery is another common fear tactic. Those who go against Kaiser or the Legion's way of life often find themselves enslaved. They lose their freedom and become property, forced to work for the Legion under grueling conditions. This fear of losing everything, including personal freedoms and one's own life, keeps many in line. Fear becomes a shadow over the Legion, shaping how people behave and interact. It's not just about following orders, it's about doing so out of fear of the consequences. In this way, fear becomes a powerful tool that Kaiser uses to maintain control, ensuring that the Legion remains a society where obedience is not just a choice, but a necessity for survival. Moving beyond fear, another key aspect that makes Kaiser's Legion work is the way they reshape the beliefs and identities of the people they conquer. They mold, or indoctrinate, everyone into the same being, creating a legion where individuality is replaced by not only a shared identity, but crucially, a shared purpose. In the legion, when they conquer a new tribe or group, they don't just stop at taking over their land. Kaiser believes in changing the very essence of who these people are. This process is called cultural indoctrination where the Legion erases the old ways of a tribe and replaces them with the beliefs and values of the Legion. Take for example the assimilation of Ulysses' old tribe, the Twisted Hares. Once a powerful tribe with their own customs, language, and traditions, notably the importance of their hairstyle, the Twisted Hares would be assimilated into the Legion. After being taken in, they would lose all of that. Their old identity would be replaced with the Legion's way of life. No longer did tribes like the Twisted Hares, Blackfoots, or Hydebarks exist. You are now the Legion. In a similar vein, individuality is another thing that the Legion doesn't really allow. For the most part, everyone in the Legion wears similar uniforms, follows the same rules, and is expected to think the same way. There's no room for personal choices or expressions. Your individuality is swallowed up by the larger identity of the Legion. I'm no longer Nort. You're no longer you. We are Legion. Now, this lack of individuality actually helps in creating a sense of unity. We all dress the same. We all believe the same things. We all follow the same rules. We are the Legion. This unity makes the Legion stronger because it allows for everyone to be on the same page, working towards the same goals. 
No longer is society burdened with people trying to attain individual achievements and goals. Rather, one can find purpose and satisfaction through helping the Legion. In a world where the old ways of life have crumbled and survival is uncertain, some might find comfort in being part of something bigger. This is what Kaisar offers. The chance to be part of a powerful and disciplined society where everyone is equal in their loyalty to the Legion. Obviously, it's a trade-off. You lose your individuality and plenty of rights, but gain the strength and protection of the Legion. So, cultural indoctrination and the lack of individuality work hand-in-hand -hand for Kaisar's Legion. By reshaping the beliefs and identities of conquered tribes and discouraging individual expression, the Legion creates a society where everyone marches to the same beat, making them a formidable force in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Beyond its authoritarian rule, fear tactics, and cultural indoctrination, the Legion has a few other aspects to them that contributes to their strength and dominance in the post-apocalyptic world. One of the Legion's standout strengths is its formidable military force. Driven by a fear of failure, the Legion's army tends to get stuff done, no matter the cost. Death isn't something to be feared, but rather the greatest sacrifice one can make to further the Legion's goals. As of 2281, the Legion has successfully conquered a total of 87 tribes across the Grand Canyon, Arizona, and Colorado. Furthermore, the Legion, despite not being as technologically adept as other post-war factions, is quite resourceful. Combat gear is easily made and standardized across their forces. The fort is a crude but effective forward command post built four years prior to the start of New Vegas. And effective infrastructure has allowed for many Legion settlements to enjoy the comforts of electricity, clean water, food, and low crime rates. And of course, oftentimes when the Legion comes around, there isn't much of a choice about what to do. The overwhelming force of the Legion and its lack of real resistance east of the Colorado River has allowed the Legion to snowball their group across much of the American Southwest. The group sweeps in, eradicates those against it, strictly lords over those for it, and moves on. The Legion, while a dominating force, is also a strategic one ensuring its survival and expansion through a combination of military might and resourcefulness. Now, this is probably the most important reason as to why Kaiser's Legion works. There exists one powerful force that ties everything together. The charisma of Kaiser himself. It's like the man has a magnetic pull that draws people in and keeps them devoted to the Legion's cause. Kaisar and the Legion have the ultimate goal of seizing control of New Vegas and the Mojave, using the landmark to fully establish his empire. His charisma, or the way he can inspire and influence people, is the glue that holds this grand vision together. When Kaisar speaks, people listen. His words are direct and clear, painting a picture of a new world order, free from the chaos of the old world. He talks about creating a society that's strong, disciplined, and capable of bringing peace and order to the wasteland. This vision is appealing to many in the harsh and unpredictable post-apocalyptic world. They want stability, and Kaisar promises just that. But it's not just about what Kaisar says, it's how he says it. The way he speaks makes people believe in him and his vision. They see him as a powerful leader who can lead them to a better future. This charisma is crucial for keeping the Legion cohesive because it fosters a deep sense of loyalty and devotion among its members. Kaisar makes people feel connected to something greater than themselves, and this connection becomes a driving force for the Legion. Kaisar's charisma is also evident in the way he presents himself. He's not just a leader, he's a symbol of strength and authority. The way he carries himself, the way he speaks, and the confidence he exudes all contributes to the Legion's perception of him as a figure to be revered and followed. It's not just the Legion, it's Kaisar's Legion. 
It is thanks to Kaiser that the Legion just isn't some run-of-the-mill, aimless war machine. He's managed to create a society driven by a shared dream of a new and powerful order. He's given his people what everyone so desperately desires in a world torn asunder. A purpose. In the unforgiving landscapes of Fallout New Vegas, Kaiser's Legion stands as a dominant force, its success built upon a multifaceted foundation. The Legion's authoritarian rule, orchestrated by the charismatic Kaiser, acts as a powerful adhesive, enforcing discipline and unity. Fear tactics, exemplified through harsh punishment and cultural indoctrination, creates a climate of compliance and deters dissent. Kaiser's personal charisma, coupled with a clear and compelling vision, fosters loyalty and common purpose among the Legion. Kaiser's Legion works because it is a society carefully crafted through a combination of fear, discipline, unity, and military achievement. While morally dubious, the Legion's success lies in its ability to navigate the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world offering a vision of a new world rising from the ashes of the old. The Legion, for all its brutality, is a society that not only survives, but thrives in the post-apocalyptic wasteland that is Fallout. But that's all from me today, folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs> my reputation precedes me, I see. Yeah, I pulled a few pranks in my time. No kidding, what'd you cook up? Man, I can't wait to see the look on his face. <laughs>